Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be checking out a lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Queen. And it, judging by the size of the box, you're probably thinking, oh, it's just another 12 volt battery. But is it? Let's go ahead and open it up and find out. All right, right on top, you can see that there's a little packet. Let's go ahead and open that up. There's a quick start guide and a manual. And you can see on the front of the manual, but this is not a 12 volt battery. It is actually a 24 volt or, you know, with lithium iron phosphate, this would be considered a 25.6 volt nominal 50 amp hour battery. And also you can see that this is a smart edition. So it does have Bluetooth so we can connect it to an app and it does have low temperature charging protection, which we will be testing in a little bit further down the line. Like I said, it has a quick start guide and it also gives you some stickers. Um, I personally think that is ridiculous, but if I owned an RV, I'd probably be plastering these all over the place. Pulling out the top styrofoam, you can see it says post bolts here. And so they have a little baggie with, uh, it feels like two post bolts and uh, two washers along with two post bolt covers. And then we have the battery. All right, so what we have here is a Power Queen 24 volt, 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now what that means is it's gonna give you the 1280 watt hours, just like a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery does. And it is in a group 24 case. I'll go ahead and put the dimensions right down here. And when it comes to the weight, this thing comes in at 21.4 pounds. All right, when it comes to the life cycle of this battery, you can expect it to live uh, about 4,000 cycles. Uh, so, you know, if you think about that, where you cycle it every day, you're talking 10 to 11 years. Of course, when you charge this, you want to be using a, uh, well, a 24 volt charger, uh, specifically a lithium iron phosphate battery charger. That would be uh, your best option. When it comes to the BMS, uh, the BMS says that it can do a continuous charge and discharge of 50 amps. Now, I'm actually kind of disappointed in that. I was hoping that it would have a 100 amp BMS inside, because that way you could actually use this with like a 2500 or 3000 watt inverter, and you could power some big items. But since it only does a, a 50 amp max continuous, uh, you can still only use it like you would a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery but it does say that it can do 60 amps of discharge for 30 minutes, which I think is kind of odd. And then it also says that it can do a 250 amp discharge for one second. But my question is, what happens if we push 100 amps through? Or even 150, will the battery shut off? Or is it gonna just wait for it to get too hot and it will shut off because it's over temperature? I think where this battery really does shine is for those people that have trolling motors in their boats and they have a 24 volt trolling motor, uh, this would be able to power it uh, up to a hundred pound thrust. All right, just like with every battery that I review, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the voltage of this battery to make sure that it is at a proper voltage when it was delivered to me. I will then charge this battery up to a hundred percent using a 24 volt charger. Then I will do a discharge test to make sure we are getting the 50 amp hours that we paid for. Okay, right out of the box, this battery is at 4.98. And what that means is that we need to wake this battery up before we can use it. So I'm gonna use my desktop charger, uh, crank that up to like 25 volts and wake this battery up. And actually, before I go ahead and use my desktop charger, I'm going to go ahead and load in the app. And I'm going to see if first the app works with a battery that has its BMS uh, put to sleep. And I'm going to see if I can actually turn it on via app. That way you don't have to have a 24 volt, zero voltage charger in order to wake this thing up. All right, well, I loaded up the Power Queen app. I then added this battery to the app by scanning the uh, QR code on the top of the battery. And when it tried to connect, it said failure to connect Bluetooth. Uh, so we can't connect to the battery 
probably until we wake it up. So let's go ahead and wake it up. All right, to wake up a 24 volt battery, you just have to give it pretty much a 24 to 26 volt source. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crank it up to like 25 volts. All right, 24.6 I think is good enough. All right, all you need to do is get your 24 volt source and just tap these on. There we go, that's it, that's all it takes. Let's turn this off. And now let's check the voltage of the battery. 26.32, that is perfect. And let's go ahead and see if we can reconnect on the app. And now it does say Bluetooth connected. So let's go ahead and check out the app while we're here. You can see uh, on the app that our state of charge is right at 49%. Uh, and the temperature is 66.2 degrees inside the battery. Uh, the voltage is 26.3, kind of like how we measured. Uh, down here at the bottom, it does show that the balance is turned off. Uh, the cells in uh, the battery is optimal working condition and the BMS is running smoothly. Uh, this is not green. The balance is not green because the cells are well balanced. It probably won't start balancing itself until it gets to a higher state of charge. Uh, below that, we show device name, serial number, number of times cycled, and the firmware version. If you go to this little light bulb in the middle, it does show how to troubleshoot your connected devices. And then on the third option at the bottom, uh, there is a discharge switch, so you can turn off the discharge. Uh, you can remove the device from the app and you can actually power off the device. So all in all, a pretty standard app. It gives you all the information uh, that you really need, like your state of charge, uh, your power, your current, and your voltage of the battery. It doesn't give you individual cell voltages, um, but for the majority of people, they don't really need that. All right, like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and charge this up to 100%, and then I'll do a discharge test, and I'll let you know the results. All right, well, the capacity test is done for this 24 volt, 50 amp hour Power Queen battery. And you can see right there that we got 52.39 amp hours out of this battery. And that means that it's 1345.07 watt hours. All right, I'm gonna start the high amperage testing. So let me show you what I got going on here. As you can see, we have the Power Queen uh, battery right here, the 24 volt, 50 amp hour battery. And we have a, uh, a voltmeter right here and it's right at 26.63 volts and I also have an amp clamp which right now it is pulling about 0.85 amps that is running the inverter and also this uh, new wave induction cooktop uh, I also have a thousand watt heat gun right here so that should actually give us it's, I think it's actually a 1200 watt heat gun so that should give us right at our uh, our 50 amps for this five minute test. Cause we wanna make sure that it can run, uh, it's cause it says that the max continuous output should be 50 amps. So I wanna make sure that this can handle that with, for five minutes for no problem. And then we're gonna use the, uh, the new wave to start stepping it up to see what happens if we get, you know, 70 amps, 100 amps, 150 amps. And hopefully the battery knows that it's going over too far and that it shuts off but we'll see. So let's go ahead and begin. Oh, I almost forgot. I need my timer. All right. I got my timer and I also went ahead and put the app on. Let's go ahead and put it up on the screen. So that way you can kind of see the voltage drop when we put in that 50 amp load. So let's begin. Turn on this heater. And our voltage drop is now down to 25.8. Our current is right at 60 amps. Let's go ahead and start this. All right, timer set. And you can see at our amp clamp that it does show 50.8 amps. And this shows our voltage is at 25.46 and the amp shows 25.6. So that's pretty close. Yeah, this shows 51 amps. The app shows, oh, the app is kind of all over the place. Look at that. It's going from 66, 68, 48, 35. So uh, that right there, uh, uh, the, the app, I don't like how the app shows the amperage going all bonkers like that. So, all right, but I'll be back in five minutes and we'll see the results. 
All right, well, we have been running this test for five and a half minutes and this battery is not even remotely warm. Uh, it still feels room temperature. We've been doing 51 amps this entire time and the voltage right now is sitting steady at 25.25 volts. So let's go ahead and start increasing the amperage and see when this battery actually shuts off due to high amperage protection. All right, it actually took me a while uh, to get my water. I was totally not prepared. So this is now running on seven minutes and 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and add in another 600 watts and see what happens. Here we go. All right, we now are at 82 amps. Our voltage has dropped down to 24.75. All right, and I pulled up the app and you can see that the current in the app is still all over the place. I mean, we're looking at 54, 61, 85, 104, 110, 93, 69, 54. It's all over the place. So I don't like that at all. Um, my amp clamp does say 82.5 amps, so that's what we're gonna go with. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on the screen so that way hopefully we can find uh, we can find out what happens when we actually get an alert. But we're at 83 amps. It's been over a minute since I started that. So let's go ahead and bump this up to 900 watts. All right, we're now at 900 watts plus the uh, 1200 watts going on in the background. And our amp clamp is right at 97.7 amps and our battery and our battery just shut off. All right, so it successfully did an over amperage discharge event and it did show it in the app, but I did not capture it. But what I wanna find out is what happens if I run that, that 1200 watt heat gun and just crank up my new wave, how long does it take before this battery shuts off? Because it actually turned back on within 30 seconds, which I do like also. So let's go ahead and run this test again. I'm gonna go ahead and zero this out. We're gonna turn everything on full blast. We're gonna be getting like 120, 130 amps, and we're gonna see how long the battery can last. So let's start. Turn on the heat gun, turn the new wave on 1300 watts, high, start. Start our timer. We have, oh, right when it gets, right when it got to 100 amps, right when it got to 100 amp, it shut off. So that is great. And let's see how long it takes to start back up. It stopped at like four seconds, so it should start right back up around 30 to 35 seconds. It turned back on, it actually turned back on in 25 seconds. All right, now that we know that the high amperage testing was a success, Let's go ahead and put this thing in a freezer and see if the low temperature charging protection works. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a 12 volt refrigerator and I'm gonna lower that down to as close to 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius as I can. Hopefully it's between 25 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll leave it in there for 24 hours and then we're gonna try to charge it. <clears throat> All right, well, this Power Queen battery has been in this Iceco 12 volt refrigerator for the past 24 hours. And let's go ahead and pull up the app to see what it says. All right, you can see right there that it shows the temperature as being 24.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and pull this out and see if it charges. All right, like I said before, this battery is at 24.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which is well below what it should be to be able to charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this uh, 12 to 24 volt charger, and we're gonna see on the app whether it uh, triggers a under temperature charging protection. So let's go ahead and start. Positive to positive. Negative to negative. Here we go. It's time to charge. And the charger just turned off. And you can see on the app 
that we do have a low temp protection signal on the app. So the battery did exactly what it's supposed to. All right, so what do I think of the Power Queen 25.6 volt, 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, it performed exactly the way that it should. The high amperage protection, uh, it triggered at 100 amps, which is totally fine with me. Um, it also triggered the low temperature charging protection when it was below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And also when it came to the capacity, I uh, captured 52, a little bit over 52 amp hours from this battery. So everything checked out. The only thing that I did not like was how the app performed when we were doing those high amperage testing. That amperage was all over the place and I don't like that one bit. You can't get a very good understanding of how much power you're using when it's jumping from 30 to 70 amps. So that's my only complaint. So if you have any questions about this battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you would like me to tear down this battery in a future video, please go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. If I get like 15 or 20 comments asking to tear it down, I will sure do that. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.